Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our first keynote speak of the day. Um, in September 2018, Lloyds announced the appointment of John Neal as their new Chief Executive Officer. When you read John's biography, it's very, very impressive. I've just pulled a few figures out which I thought you would be quite interested in. John previously was CEO, Group CEO, of QBE, which is a global insurance business, as we know, with a significant Lloyds footprint. John was actually responsible for employing over 14,000 people in 37 countries with a GWP in excess of $14 billion. Prior to this, he had a management buyout with Ensign to establish a dedicated managing agency. He's also worked at Bankside Managing Agency, where he was the youngest active underwriter at Lloyd's. John has agreed to answer questions after his address, so could I ask you to pose those questions via the MGAA app? Just go on to live polls and Q&A and select from the three rooms, room number one, because that's where John is, room number one. My colleague, Paula Doolan, will be facilitating the Q&A, but ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to Mr. John Neal. Uh, morning, everyone. I quite fancy getting the questions from room two and room three, I'm, I'm minded to think, but um, let's see. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the work that we're doing at, at Lloyd's to ensure that the uh, MGA community and our cover holders can work with our market more easily and more efficiently, both today uh, and in the future. Um, I think, as you well know, insurers are facing several challenges. We don't necessarily offer all the products for all of the key risks that your customers are facing. Our cost of business today is just simply too high, and we're not doing enough to attract the best talent into our industry. Comparatively, we're just not seen as the most desirable sector to work in. So from a Lloyd's perspective, we're trying to tackle these challenges head on to ensure that we can continue to provide outstanding products and services to our customers and your customers in the short, medium, and the long term. So there are three main actions that we're focusing on. And the first regards performance. I think performance just has to be front and center of everything you do. Performing well gives you the permission to do everything else you want to do in business. Until you perform, I don't think you have a permission to get off that base. So in the absence of solid performance, we don't have the permission to talk about strategy and the future and the ideas we might have. So the second item that we have is culture. I, I think you have to be inclusive to be innovative and you can't be innovative without being inclusive. You can't attract the best talent without being inclusive and innovative. It's a prerequisite for success. You have to look and represent the customer base you're interacting with. So that's why we're so determined to act uh, and act on recent media allegations that our market doesn't represent inclusion and doesn't represent the very best that is, to, is there to be offered in our industry. The third is, is getting focused around a strategy, but perhaps more importantly, executing that strategy. And I think we've begun that. So the document that we published at the beginning of May called The Future at Lloyd's suggests some ways in which Lloyd's could change and sets out a timetable for building some of these solutions. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. So what are we actually doing? Uh, I'd like to break that down into things we're doing in the short to medium term and things that we might do in the long term. So as you know, 2018 saw us target better performance in the marketplace. I think that was critical work. And if I give you some of the numbers at Lloyd's, that might explain some of the challenges we were tackling. Best in class, top quartile at Lloyd's was running with a combined operating ratio of 92.8%. I could only find one insurer in our global peer group that bettered that. Bottom quartile was 133%. When I looked at a relevant peer group, I couldn't find anybody within 20 points of that. So that translated into an aggregate combined ratio for the market of 104.5%, simply 
not good enough. So last year, we made it clear that if you're in the bottom quartile, you need to present us with a plan that demonstrates you can return to profitability quickly. I don't think that's too much to ask, nor should it be too challenging. That is something we should simply do as the rhythm of the way in which we go about our business. It transpired, I think, when you look six to eight months later after that work that our actions were market leading. It's interesting that it's not just us that's saying that now. You've even got Brian Dupro in the US giving credit to AIG and Lloyds for being partly responsible, at least, for putting common sense pricing and conditions back into the marketplace. Not sure that's entirely true, but let's take um, a bit of credit around that while we can. But we are thinking about how we manage performance differently as we go forward. So as we've looked into the 2020 period, and as we look at how we approve plans from 2019 to 2020, it's quite important that we differentiate between that top quartile and that bottom quartile. We've said to the top quartile, people that have outperformed the market and done so consistently, submit your plan whenever you want to and we'll file it. And when I say we'll file it, we'll file it. It's approved. In reverse, if you're bottom quartile, then you will go through a robust and challenging business plan process. So I think there is some strong differentiation between good and bad. Context to that is it doesn't mean by any stretch of the imagination in 2019, Lloyds is closed for business. In fact, quite the opposite. If you go back to what we've done to set ourselves up for success this year, it's important to say that no class of business has been exited and we remain writing all product lines. And we've been very consistent in saying that good new business is very welcome to the marketplace. Even the plans we signed off at the beginning of the year assumed that Lloyd's underwriters would write seven and a half billion pounds of new business in 2019. Already this year, we've approved seven new UK cover holders and six branch applications. Uh, you may have read that we've already received multiple approaches from syndicates to amend their business plans for 2019 in light of what they think is improved market conditions. And we've been very clear on the process we will go through to approve those plans. And equally clear on the time scale it will take to approve the plans. We've said, present the plans to us in the way in which we're asking you to, and we will approve or at least review those plans in five working days. So what we also want to do is make it that much easier for you to do business. You know, for MGAs and cover holders, you do represent an important and fast growing channel for Lloyds. You bring in about a third of all the business we write. And it's really important that we make the processes for doing that as simple as we can. As you may recall, we're currently building one streamlined, straightforward process for onboarding, creating right first time binders, providing simple out of a box trading solutions and allowing easier data reporting and auditing. So quick update on where we're at with that. In terms of onboarding, we've delayed the launch of Chorus, which takes cover holders through the approval process and allows for right first time binders to be created so that we can ensure that that system does exactly what you need it to do and what we need it to do for you. It'll be ready to go live in the new year. In the meantime, we've updated our rule book so that we can adopt a more risk-based approach to oversight once Chorus goes live, so our engagement with you is designed to be tailored to your individual business. So we will also launch our enhanced full cover holder placement lifecycle solution, which includes submission, policy management, cash handling, claims recording, and payments through Workbench later this year. So to give you a few stats in terms of um, our reporting tools, which we've called DASATs, this is now live and in particular in our European solution is mandated for use. So just over 80% of the contracts that we've seen go through Brussels have been created on DA sats and about 48% of the board row that we would expect to be processed this year have come through already. So that's about 1,200 binding authority contracts for the 2019 underwriting year and it's almost 3,500 completed board row. And interestingly, even for our European business, um, we are slightly ahead of plan. Uh, that's in terms of income expectations. 
So good progress, actually. And by next year, all of the components that you would want us to have will be up and running so we can create uh, a more seamless and complete process for delegated authority and bound underwriting uh, with benefits that we must and continue to build on year and year. So that work shouldn't only make it easier to do business with Lloyds in the short to medium term, but also acts as a vital springboard for what we want to do longer term. So we need to make it continually easier, more beneficial and more straightforward for you to do business with the Lloyds market in the future. So we started putting together our views on a longer term strategy in October. We actually went to a thousand um, different stakeholders asking them for their opinions on Lloyds. Somewhat shockingly, 25% of those stakeholders were end customers. So we did actually say, what do you and don't you like about Lloyds? What should we change and what should we keep? So we also deliberately went out and spoke to people who do not participate in the Lloyds marketplace today to really understand why they've chosen not to. So the feedback that we got, which included very significant feedback from MGAs and our coverholder community, so thank you for your input, was really valuable. And we used it to shape that prospectus, which we called the future at Lloyds. So one of the first um, pieces of information that came from that was an encouragement to build on our strengths. And people referred to our strengths as our global platform, um, of which cover holders are an integral part, our network of almost 200 licenses around the world, and our unique ability to connect underwriting and broking expertise. I think these items, coupled with what is undoubtedly the best known insurance brand in the world, do set Lloyds apart and give us a very solid foundation which we must continue to recognize and build on. Second bit of feedback that was quite interesting was that what people have traditionally regarded as USPs are today just hygiene factors. So things like financial security, willingness to pay a claim are really important, but they don't differentiate you. Most of your comparators in the world would also have those features. So what we do need to do is innovate in terms of the products and services that we provide, not only to keep up with our competitors, but to try and stay ahead of the game. Thirdly, we were told really clearly to show ambition. So in effect, the consultation document that we published, <coughs> The Future at Lloyd's, is a first step in that direction. We were also asked to build our solutions collaboratively, um, which again is why the ideas that we put forward are very much based on the views that were given to us and are not top-down thinking of what we do and don't think an insurance market of the future should look like. And it's really important to get some balance in a Lloyd's context because what people might not appreciate is 50% of what Lloyd's does today is specialty and reinsurance business and 50% is MGA coverholder or delegated business. So we do serve two equal markets which have very different demands and expectations. And whatever we do in the future needs to accommodate both sets of constituents and to do so particularly well. So based on the feedback we've had, we've tried to reimagine what the future could look like for insurance and reinsurance and what the benefits could be for all of our stakeholders. But what I'm just going to do now is try and focus particularly on what I think the benefits could be for the MGA community and the coverholder community. I think the headline for me is that there are some real pluses within the proposals that are presented such as the Lloyd's Risk Exchange, a new claims process, our syndicate in a box solution, and a Lloyd's market ecosystem, which you can tap into, and all of which should enhance the value to you and to your customers. If, if you've had the chance to go through that document, you'll be familiar with some of the ideas that I've just mentioned, but what I might do is just give a little bit more detail on each of the ones I've just referred to. So the risk exchange is one part of a dual platform solution, which by design will support cover holder type business, allowing it to be quoted, bound, and the documentation issued promptly and efficiently, and allow that process to happen at a fraction of today's cost. The proposals generated quite a lot of attention among some cover holders and wholesale brokers who fear that they could be cut out of the chain. That's simply not how we see it. The, ex the exchange has been consulted on with cover holders in mind, building on the technology that is coming down the line for Chorus 
and DA sats. So you're already in the front line as a key part of the distribution chain, connecting us through your customers and the retail broking network. So that risk exchange will enable you to put the products that are being developed at Lloyd's Market into an electronic trading environment and similarly will connect direct into your platform or your systems, which is where the design is uh, meant to support a reduction in administration and simplify the costs in the chain of placing business that exists currently. By definition, it's meant to make us more competitive and ultimately allow us to put a cheaper product in front of a customer. Another idea we have is flexibility around capital, which is giving everyone the choice of how different types of capital might attach to risk. At the moment, Lloyd's operates very efficiently on a three-year time horizon for capital. It doesn't work quite so efficiently if capital has a one-year time horizon or if it has a seven-year time horizon. So we're minded to create a marketplace that can be open to different types of capital that have different return expectations and different risk time horizons. Our sending it in a box idea is des designed to operate in certain circumstances. So if you're an MGA and you want to put some of your own money at risk, then we should encourage you to do that and allow that to be facilitated. It could be a vehicle for an MGA that partially wants to capitalize its own interests and to be able to do that at Lloyd's. If you've got a particular product in a particular geography that requires subscription support, we should facilitate that. If you've got a good idea around a different type of risk and a solution for it, reputation risk could be a good example, then why don't we allow that to happen? So greater flexibility means you have faster, easier, and a lower cost route into Lloyd's with a clear pathway, should you choose it, to achieve full syndicate status if that's ultimately where you want to be. We also talk about modernizing claims services and claims practices. I think we're superb at our preparedness to pay the claim, but sometimes we take a little bit too long to do it. In today's personal lines market, if we look around us, most first party losses are settled or can easily be settled within a week. When we looked around for best practice in the world, the quickest I could find for a life cycle of a first party claim was 15 minutes. So Peng An in China now settled first party motor claims in 15 minutes using a combination of satellite technology, iPads, real time contact with loss adjusters and direct credit to the bank account. So we know the technology is out there to facilitate very different ways of managing claims and we can certainly improve our lead times at Lloyd's, maybe not 15 minutes, but maybe months could become weeks and weeks could become days. So what we're proposing to do is to provide the platform and integrate the technology so that you don't have to. The new claim system should allow us to set clear service level agreements on how claims should be managed to ensure that the processes and the speed to settle a claim is much quicker. So that means we're delivering a much better all-round service, which should help you, in your world, distinguish yourself from the competition and build, ultimately, a lasting relationship um, with your customers. So surrounding some of these ideas is the concept of a Lloyd's ecosystem, and that's the environment within which the brokers, the insurers, MGAs, and other parties, uh, particularly capital, uh, connect to reinvent themselves. So this is where third-party services that you may not have the direct expertise in yourself can actually be present to assist you and your customers. And our intention is that we will accredit those third-party service providers, giving you and your customers the certainty and the confidence that they will operate to a standard that is consummate with the Lloyds brand and with the standards which you would expect of us. So one, one really important point I want to make, and you may have seen me say this before, is that our design is altruistic. Um, if you're going to be the world's leading marketplace, perhaps only the, true mar the only true marketplace for insurance or reinsurance, um, one where we could be significantly larger than we are today, then we should be altruistic. We should be happy that global insurers elect to sponsor some of their business and some of their activity at Lloyd's and similarly elect not to do some of their business at Lloyd's. So we've got to think about how that can work effectively, 
how those insurers can connect in and connect out of our marketplace. If we do that and do that well, then surely that is to the benefit of the marketplace that we are and to the benefit of all of the people who choose to participate in and around the Lloyds marketplace. And I think critically importantly, we've got to ensure that our culture, our marketplace is diverse and inclusive. If we don't do that, then we simply won't be successful. So almost every stakeholder we speak to has some concerns about the implications for them in the marketplace. Like any change, there will be more benefit for some than there will be for others. I don't think we should hide from that. That is reality. You know, we are, by definition, redesigning the value chain. So if you add value, whether that be for the customer, it could be through innovation, could be expertise, could be data, could be analytics, could be more client centricity, then the future at Lloyd's will work for you. If those aren't features of your business, then perhaps it won't. So I think the future at Lloyd's really does play to the strength of an MGA or a cover holder. I think you're smaller, you're more agile, you're more entrepreneurial, and you're more ideally suited to be connected to some of the insure tech that is representing in innovative ways of attracting uh, and supporting new business. Um, you are, in my eyes, the incubators of innovation. And the future at Lloyd's is designed to allow you to showcase your skills and your products to a wider marketplace. It should help you to access Lloyd's more easily. It will speed up claims processes, make the most of the technology that's available there, and offer Lloyd's approved and accredited third party services. We are attempting to support you in supercharging your offer to customers in a way that ought not to be possible outside of Lloyd's. So these benefits combined with the work that we're doing to streamline our processes around delegated authority business that I talked about earlier on do, I think, make working with Lloyd's in the future an even more compelling and valuable commercial prospect. So the ideas that we put forward might not be the best ideas. There may be better ideas. There may be some ideas that don't resonate with everyone in the room, and there may be some ideas that we simply shouldn't pursue. But we're getting feedback every day as to how these could be improved, and we're making sure that the ideas, to the best of their ability, work for as many people as they can, and we do genuinely want your help in shaping those. Um, in that vein, we've had very constructive discussions with the MGA already, and we're having more detailed discussions with a number of our key MGAs and cover holders. You can be part of this process too by participating in the consultation. Phase one ends actually on the 10th of July, so don't wait too long. So if you've got, I was, I was gonna say 10 minutes, it's probably nearer 20 minutes, then please do register your feedback at lloyds.com forward slash the future at Lloyds. I, I mentioned execution a little bit earlier on, and we're very aware that it's super easy to come up with a plan, and it's much, much harder to implement it. So we are already focused on execution, and we do have a clear process and timetable in place to do so. After the 10th of July, we'll look at the feedback we've received, and we'll use that to inform the design of a blueprint, which we're publishing at the end of September. And from there, we'll start to build the solutions, some for which there is technology that's already available, and some of the solutions we believe can be up and running before the end of the year. Others will take a little bit more time, and we'll partner with technologists or third parties to evaluate what are the best solutions and how quickly can these be implemented. The process that we're talking about is by design agile. We're talking about technology solutions that will be constructed in two, three, or four week sprints. They'll be challenged, tested, prototyped, re-challenged, re-tested, re-prototyped, and released. It's a very, very different way of working and it's a way which is designed to include the marketplace right at the beginning to ensure that the thinking, the ideas, and the solutions do work, are adapted, and are very relevant to the way in which you do your business. It's very much a partnership. What's interesting is we're already garnering a lot of interest globally um, in our community, and it's reinvigorating many of the partners with whom we trade today. It's opening the eyes of some of the leading insurers and reinsurers in the world, and some of those who do not participate on the Lloyds platform today. And that's really encouraging, and it hints at the opportunities for 
common sense good ideas and profitable growth ahead, all, all of which is predicated on a simple belief that if Lloyd's is the only true marketplace for insurance and reinsurance, then we should representatively, in our eyes at least, potentially be 20 sorry, 10 percent of the world's premium pool for commercial corporate specialty insurance and reinsurance. To give you an idea of size, that is twice the size we are today. So I think it's an exciting time for us to drive change forwards. We're just at that tipping point, I think, of pulling the market back into shape and realizing the opportunity in front of us. Um, I don't think it's quite revolution, but maybe it's revolutionary evolution, if that makes any sense. So just in closing, I wanted to stress that the future at Lloyd's is very much your future. Um, it's a future that's designed to support the MGA cover holder and delegated authority business by enhancing what you do. So please do let us have your feedback on what works well for you and indeed what doesn't work quite so well from you. We're very, very keen to hear your views. So thank you for listening this morning.